Hey, it's Mike here, and I talk about chronometer.com a lot, how it's a great nutrition tool to track food and learn about what's in what food. But as many of you have pointed out, I've never actually shown you guys how to use it. So today we are going to do a walkthrough. So a more practical video today. Now for some people, chronometer can be the difference between failing on a vegan diet and not because it combats one of the main reasons that vegans fail, which is that transition from calorically dense foods that are animal-based down to those water-rich, fiber-rich, lower-calorie plant foods, and then they go hungry and are like, screw this. Or they think they instantly got a deficiency. No. So if anything, chronometer can be a tool to ease irrational fears of deficiency on a vegan diet. And a bit of housekeeping, remember I am not a nutritionist. So some of the settings I'm about to show you are based off my choice to follow certain nutrition authorities. You can make your own choice as to who to follow. And of course, if you want, you can always find a plant-based nutritionist. All right, so just go to chronometer.com. It is free on a computer, but I believe it is not free on a mobile device. So you just type in your email and password, and then you go ahead and type in your personal information. Let's say the average female, five foot two, maybe 140 pounds. I don't know what the average is now. Okay, now you need to validate your account. All right, before we look at how to actually add food and things like that, I wanna look at the profile tab and see some of the options you have here. Um, the default is that you're getting emails, no spam, but I don't need emails at all. Uh, and then they have a reminder email, which can be very useful. Let's say it's 1 p.m. and you want to get an email then because you might have forgot to log your lunch. So that's pretty cool. And over here we have our body details. This is important because you got your basal metabolic rate, which is how much you burn at rest, but then you have your activity level, which can drastically change how many calories you need. Lightly active versus very active, that's 259 versus 1,166 calories. Moderately active, 650 calories. So let's assume you're moderately active and then make sure you get all these details right because for example, shifting from a five foot two female to like a six foot male, that's you know 170 pounds, massively changes the amount of calories required. Another very interesting thing is the nutritional targets over here. A lot of these are going off recommendations by particular authorities and authorities vary. So it's interesting to see what they suggest here as a default. I wouldn't suggest changing too much here, but there are some interesting things you can do. Like in the beginning, iodine is not visible. It's cool to show that. However, if nobody entered how much iodine was in a food, it will not say there is any. Um, but looking at lipids, there's sort of an interesting thing going on here where it's recommending you to eat a one to 10 ratio of omega-3 to omega-6. And we know that that one to two or one to four is better. But in order to reach that with a minimum of 17 for a guy, you have to be eating way over sort of the recommended limit of omega-3s. So this is a very complicated subject, which deserves a whole nother video. But for now, oh, and this is totally up to you and what authority you wanna follow, I definitely pop this up to at least two as many vegan nutritionists recommend. And finally, I think it's pretty funny under macronutrient targets, which is, you know, what percent of your total calories you're getting from carbs and protein and fat. They still have 30bananasaday.com, low fat, raw, vegan, which is 80, 10, 10. I'm personally not shooting for any macronutrient ratio in particular. Just eating whole foods is my main goal. Now let's check out some foods. So adding a food is pretty easy. You just type add food here. Let's say we wanna eat some black beans can drained. Let's say you're eating a cup of black beans, 240 calories, and looking down at nutritional target, that's already 50% of your daily need of fiber, quite a bit of iron, things like that. Protein even, you can see a pretty even spread of protein if you're concerned about that. All right, so let's add some more foods and get an idea of what a whole meal might look like. Let's say you're doing rice and beans. This is steamed, not dry. Always pay attention to stuff like that here, steamed versus dry. And let's say you're gonna have a cup of that. Let's say you're gonna eat some, I don't know, chard or something or kale, whatever you want. A cup of that. Maybe we can add some, who knows? Maybe you're roasting some almonds. Uh, damn it. Roasted right here. You know, you can sometimes you can choose individual almonds, which is pretty goofy. Uh, an FDA serving size. Let's say you're doing half of that. Um, and maybe some broccoli, why not? 
some cooked from fresh broccoli, a cup of that. So now we have what looks somewhat like a meal, you know, 670 calories. We've got a pretty decent spread here. These are our general nutritional targets like fiber. And keep in mind, if you're going over this, you're not going over your daily recommended maximum. You're just going over the minimum. I've seen people get afraid of that. Iron, doing pretty good. Calcium, maybe you could add some collard greens or something, get some more. So everything is broken down into categories here. Your general, your vitamins, which is fun to look at, getting a lot of vitamin C. You've got your carbs, fats, so you can see that omega-3 to omega-6 ratio here. You've got your minerals, calcium, copper, iodine. See, no iodine. We know for a fact that there is iodine, some iodine in these foods. So this is not a great representation, but sometimes you can get an idea. And going down to protein, we can see where, you know, with one meal, we have surpassed over half of our protein requirement all the amino acids that we need. This brings me to the main challenge of chronometer, which is actually inputting the right amounts of food, accurately representing what you're actually eating. And my method for that is simply using a measuring cup to scoop food so you can get an idea of how much you're actually eating that way. And you can, of course, go and get a scale and weigh your food, which is more accurate, but I've never felt a need to go that far. Now let's go up and look at some more foods because what I would consider the most effective thing about chronometer is that you can get an idea of how many calories you're actually eating and people just don't pay attention to that very much and so let's say you have some romaine lettuce let's say you have five cups 10 cups of romaine why not 10 cups you're going crazy 80 calories right here come on 80 calories that is ridiculous I also noticed that I did not have the macronutrients showing, so show full macronutrient breakdown should give me a macronutrient breakdown of each food, which is very interesting to see. So carbs, mostly carbs. So let's compare that to some olive oil. You know, even just, even just two teaspoons, that's a teaspoon, a tablespoon. One tablespoon has more calories than 10 cups of lettuce so that shows you how refined foods can be crazy but you also want to make sure you're getting enough calories from whole foods so i think it's fun to type in various plant foods and see how much you know how much protein they actually have a cup and a half would be a pretty standard amount lentils you're told that these plants don't have complete protein these are the essential amino acids let's check out another one let's say you want to eat some pinto beans or something don't eat paint chips Pinto beans cooked from dried, cup and a half. You know, this is pretty good spread right here. Like the idea, the idea that you're not gonna get enough amino acids if you're even eating legumes in any reasonable amount is pretty ridiculous. So a really important thing that you might start to realize is that vegetables don't really have that many calories. You eat, you know, two cups, three cups. Let's say you're eating four cups of these veggies. That's a hundred calories. That's Basically, how many calories is in an apple, right? We got 94 calories in a medium apple. And just so you know, you can always click on a single food here that you've typed in and get the particular breakdown of that food or click on the top and you will go back to all of the foods added together. And another thing I've noticed, people are like, oh, I just can't get enough omega-6s on a whole food vegan diet. I have to eat oil. No, I mean, just look at some walnuts here. Let's say you just have a serving size of walnuts. Add serving. Look at that. You are already at 11 grams of omega-6s. And you'd be amazed with what you can accomplish with just a bowl of oatmeal. It's pretty impressive. Let's say you're going steel cut, you're hardcore whole foodie in. Now, I eat almost a cup dry. I eat like 0.8 cups dry. But then I go ahead and I always add an apple and some blueberries half a cup half cup frozen blueberries if i remember to throw the ground flax in and cinnamon why not so you get an idea you're starting to meet a lot of targets already 83 percent of iron pretty impressive all that fiber, <laughs> probably more fiber than the average person eats in a day. You've got pretty good on your zinc already, which I would say is one of those things you wanna keep an eye on. Protein, look at that spread of protein, you know? People assume that all these plant foods are just devoid of protein. Nope, 
Now, one thing I did really quickly, I actually changed the source of ground flax because that original one was wrong. This one was correct right there. Two tablespoons is two grams. And then another feature, you can add exercise, which I have never really done. Let's say you're doing some vigorous bodybuilding for an hour, which would be 60 minutes, 404 calories, bam. So minus 404. If you wanna get some calcium, you can see that collards, for example, Let's see some cooked collards. If you eat a cup of cooked collards, you are looking at 267 milligrams of calcium. Well, something like a cup of chard, which is very similar, might only have 100 milligrams. Things like that are good to know. It's good to know the sources of foods. We grew up associating cow's milk with calcium, but it's good to replace those ideas of what foods have what nutrients by actually getting an intuitive look. Now, I didn't mention the calcium requirements on the profile tab when I was there, which gives me the opportunity to talk about how you can actually change requirements from here, which is easier. Calcium, as you can see, the requirement is pretty high. I would suggest choosing an authority or talking to a nutritionist to determine exactly what amount of calcium you want to eat. But looking at studies like this one, it's clear that calcium requirements are sometimes too high. Also that the amount of animal protein that you eat increases your urinary calcium and therefore your calcium requirements as well as the sodium that you eat. So according to this study, somebody who doesn't eat a lot of sodium and doesn't eat very much animal protein could only require 400 milligrams per day. There's no reason to go quite that low. So if you feel like this is ridiculously high, I believe the EU says 800 milligrams as well as some other authorities. A lot say a thousand though. So choose your own authority. Don't just go with what I'm going with or talk to a nutritionist about it. But this topic deserves a whole video because there are other things at play here like the dairy lobby as well as studies done on people with severe atherosclerosis, limiting the blood supply to their bones. So while we see studies where people aren't losing any bone mass at around 500 milligrams and the average around the world is like 400 to 500 milligrams a day without a lot of cases of osteoporosis so this is a very complicated topic now that we are talking about something that counts calories i think it's important to at least bring up the obsessive eating aspect sometimes when i mention chronometer and how it's a calorie tracker and nutrient tracker i can see people just shudder who have maybe had like an eating disorder history or are afraid of getting too obsessive about eating and i'm not an expert on eating disorders or anything like that but I feel like just doing a couple of days is great. And if you don't even wanna do a couple of days, just looking at a few foods and getting an idea of what's actually in them can't hurt. And if tracking calories really isn't the thing for you, then you can always download my food journal on plantspace.org, which just sort of pushes you in the direction of eating whole foods and it doesn't focus on the calorie content. All right, so let me know down below if you are a chronometer veteran that has any awesome tips that they can share, or if you know of another nutrient tracker that might be better, maybe one that's better for mobile and free for mobile. All right, thank you so much for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.